Last year, Siege Studios launched the Re-Terminal, a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 based touch display terminal with a pretty good list of features. One of the features that looked promising was their high speed expansion interface on the back, which they said would be used to add plug-in modules to expand the Re-Terminal's functionality and I.O. At that stage, they hadn't released any details on these expansion modules, but they reached out a few weeks ago and said that their first one has now been launched. So here it is, the Re-Terminal E10-1, the first expansion module for the Re-Terminal. Let's open it up and see what it does and how it works. It's packaged quite similarly to the Re-Terminal, in a similarly sized box as well. On the top we've got a user manual and underneath it is the E10-1. Included is also a small screwdriver and a pack of screws. On the front of the E10-1 is the high speed expansion port that'll plug into the back of the re-terminal along with a screw hole on each side to hold it in place. On the left side we've got some status LEDs, an ethernet port and then a power port. You may be wondering why we've got the ethernet and power ports as these are both already on the re-terminal. That's because this module allows you to power the re-terminal in some additional ways. The Gigabit Ethernet port on the E10-1 supports power over Ethernet, so you can power your re-terminal through a PoE-enabled network without having to use a separate power adapter. If you don't have a PoE network adapter or aren't using Ethernet for your project, then you can use a 12 volt barrel jack to power it instead of the 5 volt USB-C input that's already on the re-terminal. Additionally, the E10-1 also has a built-in UPS circuit that runs on two 18650 batteries. So this allows the re-terminal to function as a fully standalone wireless battery powered device, something that was requested quite a lot when the re-terminal was released. On the right side are two industrial ports, a DP9 connector for the RS-232 interface and a 6-pin terminal connector for the onboard RS-485 and CAN interfaces. So you've now got a number of options for industrial interfaces on the re-terminal, something that's not very common in the Raspberry Pi expansion board range. Along the top are some rubber plugs one of which is an antenna interface. On the bottom are some vents for the internal fan and then the speaker. On the back we've just got a cover for the battery compartment. There isn't another expansion port on the back of the E10-1 as well, so you won't be able to stack multiple modules together as more become available. You'll have to use them one at a time. Let's attach the E10-1 to the re-terminal and try it out. I'm also going to install two 18650 cells into it so we can try out the UPS functionality. We need to remove the rubber plugs on the back of the re-terminal to allow the E10-1 to plug into it. The E10-1 is a bit thicker than the re-terminal. I guess that's to allow enough space for the 18650 cells and the upright internal fan. We can then secure it with the two included screws. Once installed, the entire re-terminal assembly is now quite thick. It feels solidly built and good quality, but it's a bit too bulky to be a handheld type device. It would be best to have it installed on a wall panel or into an electrical enclosure. Let's now plug in our ethernet and power cable and power it up. It looks like it worked right away. The re-terminal powered up and is booted to the desktop. There is a driver that they say needs to be installed to use the functions of the E10-1. I'm not sure what works with or without the drivers as I reloaded the operating system on my re-terminal to get Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye loaded. And part of this process is the installation of the latest re-terminal driver, which looks like it includes the E10-1 drivers as well. I haven't specifically installed any E10-1 drivers and as far as I can tell everything I've tried here works correctly, but I haven't tested any of the industrial interfaces yet. There's also an internal fan in the E10-1 which is controlled using GPIO pin 23. This fan is off by default so you need to turn it on through the terminal or through a script that runs in the background. Let's try turn it on through the terminal. 
You can now hear a faint humming sound in the background. I'm going to turn it off again as we probably don't need it if we're not using an SSD or something generating a lot of heat within the enclosure. Now let's see if it stays on when I remove the power. My batteries were charged before I put them into the re-terminal, so it shouldn't need too much time to charge first. So it looks like that has worked as well. It's still running with the power cable removed. The indicator LEDs on the side show when it's receiving external power and when the internal batteries are charging. I'm not sure if the Ethernet port on the re-terminal is disabled when the E10-1 is plugged in, so let's try that. We've got an internet connection with the Ethernet cable plugged into the E10-1 board, so now let's try plug it into the re-terminal. So it looks like you can use either port if you're not using PoE. Let's now remove it from the re-terminal and open it up and take a look what's inside it. The main internal interfaces are the mini PCI Express connector that allows you to connect a 4G, LTE or LoRa module and then the M.2 B key connector that allows you to add an SSD or USB 3 ports, or even a 4G or 5G wireless module as well. They have provided a list of devices that they've tested with the re-terminal in their product wiki. I'm going to try one or two of them out in a future video. We've also got a SIM card slot for the wireless modules, dual microphones and a speaker along the top, and then the PoE adapter for the Ethernet port. The touch interface on the re-terminal, along with the UPS and industrial interfaces that the E10-1 add, make this a great device for building industrial system HMRs to interact with machine systems and sensors. It's even great for creating home automation dashboards through applications like Home Assistant, which will now be battery backed. So with the addition of a wireless 4G or 5G module, you can be notified of power outages and even run some security routines and have some level of control when your home's power is disabled or interrupted. Let me know what you think of the re-terminal E10-1 in the comment section below, and let me know what kind of devices you'd like to see me test on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews. 